So the first thing I won't be doing in this video is telling you how to pronounce the word boca, bouquet, potato, potato, however it's said. Every time I hear it, I hear it said a different way. I'm not going to take a position on that. Let's talk about what it actually is, though. I'm going to read the definition of it from Wikipedia. The visual quality of the out of focus areas of a photographic image, especially as rendered by a particular lens. Okay, that's the definition and it's quite a mouthful. Let's get into what it means to your photography. All right, I've got my coffee. Welcome back to the channel. Like every other photographic technique, creating a blurry background is not something you should do for every photograph. There's a time to create a blurry background and there's times where you really probably shouldn't. The main reason to create a blurry background is that it wonderfully isolates your subject from the background. So they don't look too close together or too similar in sharpness. Okay, let's elaborate on a case where creating a blurry background is what you want to do. And we're gonna go, I've got a sample image and it was in the thumbnail, you're gonna see it here in a minute, of an image that illustrates a, a good time to do it. But first I wanna let you see what the background really looks like that I actually shot this portrait in. So let's say you're gonna be working in a spot like this, which is really just not pretty at all. You really want to blur this background. And when you blur the background, you get this foreground area with the rock in a plane of focus with the subject, but the background becomes quite nice. Okay, so let's break down this image a little bit and why I'm using it as an example for a good use of bokeh. In this image, really, there are three planes, and I'll, I'll get to them, but first, the first plane is the plane of focus, and that is right along Sarah's eyes, and anything up and down that's in that plane, you'll, you'll notice on the rock, and there's some plants there by the rock that are also fairly in focus in that plane of focus, and that, helps, it really helps a lot to place your subject in space so they don't seem like they're nowhere, that they have dimensionality, there's a plane of focus where they are. I shot this image at 105 millimeters at f5.6. At 105 millimeters, f5.6 to me is fairly shallow when, as you know, I'm always going for printable images. Next, I want you to notice how the, the rock comes towards you onto the lower right, and as it does, it becomes softer. So again, it, it's, this is bokeh as well, in the close plane where it's out of focus closer to the camera. Once again, it places your subject in space. Next, you move to the distant plane, which everyone's used to, the blurry background. Now, as you saw a few seconds ago, this background's really not pretty, but when you soften it just the right amount, it looks quite pleasing. Now, the day I took the portrait and the day I showed the location are two different days. There was a little bit of sun the day I shot the portrait, but still, it's not pretty. It's just a wooded area. But when you soften it just the right amount, it does several things. It, it takes your focus off of the location, puts it on the subject, but it doesn't keep you from realizing you're in a place. It, it, you're, you're set in a place. You, you have a, a near, middle, and far distance. This is one of the most important things to realize when you're trying to think about doing blurry backgrounds. You don't want it to look like the subject is floating in a field of cotton. Now, let me be clear here. As some of you know who are regulars on the channel, I have a cinematic background, so when I design background softness and everything I'm talking about, it's from what is called a motivated perspective. Many photographers 
like a much softer background than I am showing you here. That's great. That's fine. Your mileage may vary. You do this to your taste. I'm just trying to illustrate the reasons and times to do it, not to do it, and to what extreme. Okay, now let's switch gears a little bit and look at a few cases where a blurry background would not be desirable. I'm gonna show a few portraits here. We'll just cycle through them where the background is really important to the portrait. That's not to say I'm trying to get it tack sharp, but I'm also not trying to minimize it in any way because the background in these images is part of the story. Now I'm going to take one of these images and I'm going to show the way I shot and presented it and I'm going to artificially soften blur the background. I understand if you did it with your lens it would look a little bit different but I want to illustrate how when a portrait needs a background if you soften the background it really just kind of looks wrong. Look at this image with the background softened. I don't know about you, but I find it disturbing. <laughs> now it's my image and I'm kind of in love with the way I shot it, granted, but I don't know. I just think it looks kind of wrong. Now there's another time when you really want to think about this. And as I do, when I print and I did print this image quite large for this exhibit, if you go too soft with that background, it, it has that jarring effect I've talked about in several videos. So that's another consideration when you choose the level of bokeh for your images. How big is the final product going to be? If it's on your phone, that's one thing. If it's a 60 inch print, that's quite another. Okay, we've been talking about blurry backgrounds. Now let's talk about how you create them. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail in this video, but I will link a video where I did go into a great deal of detail as a tutorial. So if you want more information or more in-depth knowledge, check that video out. Okay, so the first way to create a soft background in a portrait is to use a very wide f-stop, meaning f-stop, a wide f-stop is a smaller number, f2.8 going to 1.8, 1.4, depending on your lens. You need a fairly fast lens to do this. The other way, to create a soft background is to use a long focal length. In the image I showed earlier, I used a 105 millimeter focal length, which brings the plane of focus much narrower. And I only had to shoot it at 5.6 and I still got some amount of blur on the background and foreground. Now these two techniques are not equal. They don't produce a soft background in equal ways. That's very important to remember and they play off of each other. So having a wide f-stop on a long focal length is going to result in a much blurrier background than the same f-stop on a shorter focal length. Decide what you want. Don't let the camera dictate what you get. To learn much more about the relationship between f-stop and focal length, Download my guide to photographic exposure. You'll find the link in the comments below. Bokeh or soft background photography is a great tool that can make your images soar or crash and burn if you use it at the wrong time in the wrong amount. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Until the next video, cheers.